this video is going to be about background shapes in landscape. Um, and I got some questions about it from some people that have watched the foreground and middle ground videos and they're like, well, what about the background? Well, here's the background. So the main thing with the background, it has a job to do and um, it's in the word background. It has to go back. That's basically its job. Anything else is kind of secondary. If the background starts coming forward, you're killing depth. So, um, just as a reminder to yourself, off to the side of your page, you can always draw out your shapes. You're trying to simplify, right? At least when you're designing things. And simplifying goes back to your basics. Square, circle, triangle, or rectangle, or whatever. Okay. So, let's say you have a bunch of foliage that you're going to put in the background. You have some reference. You're, you're either drawing from life or whatever. Um, and you've decided that this is where your background is going to be. Right? So, everything from here down is going to be your, is going to start in your foreground, middle ground, and your background is going to show back there. So hopefully your background has some of the largest objects and that you're not cutting off the composition too much. Um, what I do is begin with big shapes. So even though these are going to be trees, I'm going to make turn them into shapes first. And I'm going to use a variety of shapes and place them at different heights right from the beginning. Okay, so this looks like I ha I've gone to the pyramids of Giza and built some, you know, apartment complexes or whatever behind them. But, but that is my first stage, you know. If this shape design is good, then the rest, anything I do on this is going to be good. If this shape design is bad, I can't save it. Okay, so to show you, um, we have some things to watch out for. There's one place that I kind of messed up, and that's right here. I created sort of an intersection. So I took this ground plane, and I intersected a triangle and this square right here. And this intersection of three places messes with depth significantly. So what I can do is I can move this this over and I can overlap that way, avoid that intersection, or I can take this angle and I can move it this way, or I can move it this way, right? Probably moving it this way would be easier and create more depth because I'm creating a more obvious overlap, right? So I can come back and I can redraw and not screw that up this time, right? I can make sure that that guy is going to overlap. And if you see something and you're trying to be very faithful to your environment, don't be, right? Make that change, make it obvious. Next, what I can do, now that I've fixed this overlap, is I can then begin to vary the shapes, right? So now I've gone, um, I've improved things, right? So this is called a tangent, and the way to think of it is basically when stuff intersects um, all together, it's going to kill depth, um, and it's basically a violation of our rule of overlap. We want to overlap as much as possible. So then I can take my effective landscape. I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see, right? Draw out my format sketch out my division of space. And on this stage, you want to be very loose um, and draw very lightly. If you need to go get a 10% cool gray marker, um, that is definitely a good idea. Highly recommend that. You can also get a 10% cool gray Prismacolor pencil. One thing to be sure is just close your shapes. Make sure they do overlap. Okay. Next thing is to start to vary that. 
So right now it's super boring. You want to make it not boring, right? You want to basically make these tree-ish. So I can take basically whatever's in front, which is this guy right over here, and start to make it more tree-ish. Make it, make it have some shrub-like outcroppings and so on. I can deviate, but basically I'm working with, still working with that square. I can subdivide it if necessary to get further overlap in that shape and so on. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing with all the other shapes. So here I've got a basic triangle. Another triangle. Another square. Here I'm making it very, very square, so it's very, very obvious and slightly cartoony. But if you're going into a more fine art direction, then you're gonna to wanna to be more subtle about it, right? Which is fine. Okay, so I've divided up my space. Then I can break up this line if I want and make things kind of overlap differently. So I can break up the bottom of this line too, because this line was kind of too continuous, right? Then I can go in with some value. Let's sharpen up real quick. And when I go in with value, I'm just thinking very, very simply, you know, I've got the white of the page, which is very easy to use. I can use, you know, like a tone that's like half. I can get very light with it. I can go fairly dark, but without getting to black. Probably won't use the absolute darkest, right? I can do a lot with just four simple tones. So. I'll start with the light tone stuff. Let's say like I want my big areas to be kind of light over here. Put another light tone in the background. Maybe I can put another light tone here. Just bracket things with light tones. And then I can put in the middle, I could put a dark tone. And then between, to separate it, I can use an in-between tone that just allows me to differentiate. And right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm designing, so I'm not being like super careful about it. I just want things to be very different enough so I can get an idea of what to do. Then, you know, from here I've got kind of my background shapes designed. I can change it, you know, I can do more variations. I can um, add things in here or there if I need to break space up even further, right? I can add in horizon lines. I can add in like clouds in the background. If I need to do that, right? Whatever I need to do, I can then begin to modify. Okay, so basically, what you're working with in the background is you're working with a with a small variety of tools, right? You're working with a little bit of overlap. You're not really working with form; you're working with shape. You're working with variations. of those shapes, right? So you're taking up those shapes and breaking it. So basically you you break shapes up to mess with to mess with them and make them more interesting. And then you're just watching out mainly for tangent lines and you're doing everything you can to make this go back and stay back, right? So you're not using a full value range, you're not using a huge amount of contrast, you're avoiding form, 
focusing on shape, kind of oversimplifying everything and allowing it to be back in the background.